You're such an asshole. Hey everybody, the old captain at assholeconsulting.com where you can go. Yeah, send me your questions. And we got a lengthy email. Well, not a lengthy email. Uh, it's about negative interest rates in this. It never is short with negative interest rates, is it? Cappy, figure I'd give you a little Christmas season bonus. Thought you could make a video on the debt bubble encompassing all the various forms of debts in the country. The national debt, student loans, credit card, mortgages, unf underfunded public pensions, unfunded liabilities for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And how it relates to your article on temporary and optimism about Trump. Oh, is that all? I just pull up all that. I heard one of the Trump transi transition team members talk about implementing negative interest rates. He provides a link to an article. As someone who has a decent understanding of economics, I see this as a last resort to delay the inevitable downturn when interest rates finally go back up. The Fed has not only manipulated the market by keeping interest rates artificially low for years, but every time they make an announcement to raise them back up, the market drops. And they panic and either don't go through it with it or they raise it by an insignificant percentage point. The economy has become a game of hot potato except the hot potato is a debt bubble about to burst. Someone is going to get blamed for it when the interest rates rise, the debt bubble blows up, the market collapses. If it is on Trump's watch, watch and he's not able to explain what caused it actually, he will get the blame and like Hoover, it will define his presidency. Let me know how much for your two cents and I'll send it your way, TJ. Well, the problem is to do all that, which, when you think about it, it's three separate requests in one. The first one required me to go and tally up all the different debts and run some kind of an economic analysis on it, what the effect of it. I'm like, God, dude, that's going to be like $2,000. He's like, oh, yeah, I guess so. I said, what, would you, do you want me to do this full-fledged analysis, or do you just want me to take a look at uh, this article uh, about uh, the negative interest rates that Trump was talking about? He's like, yeah, maybe just take a look at the interest rate thing article. I'm like, okay, let's just do that. So that's what he paid for. So... Here's the article from Business Insider. Um, incendiary Trump advisor Steve Bannon. This list is written by this, this fucking pussy called Bob Bryan. And it's really not about monetary policy um, or fiscal policy. Well, both actually a little bit. Uh, it's about Bob Bryan wanting to curse and swear and call Steve Bannon a, um, a racist. So you'd think this would be about business. It's just basically politics. If you look up Bob Bryan with a Y, I guarantee you're going to find a leftist who thinks the media is still relevant. Steve Bannon, a top advisor to Donald Trump, whose appointment has drawn intense criticism from civil rights groups and Democrats advocated using in negative interest rates to rebuild various infrastructure across the country. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, oh, they're reliable, Bannon said that he is not a white nationalist, a common ta attack since Trump named him as a top advisor, but rather an economic nationalist. Like Ed Andrew Jackson's populism, we're going to build an entirely new political movement, Bannon told The Hollywood Reporter. It's uh, everything related to jobs. The conservatives are going to go crazy. Bannon has been under fire. See, now I'd like to know about negative interest rates. That's what the title was about. And we got a whole article. Bannon has been f under fire. So, you know what? I'm just going to say... Bob thinks he's a racist. Let's just put it, well, and he's not, but let's just get in an interview, blah, blah, blah. In the interview, Bannon also said that the central bank's policy of negative interest rates would be a boom for the U.S. economy. I'm the guy pushing a trillion dollar infrastructure plan, said Bannon in the interview. With negative interest rates throughout the world, it's the greatest opportunity to rebuild everything. Shipyards, ironworks, get them all jacked up. We're just going to throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. And when you heard that, in banking, that means the bank was about to go bankrupt or your portfolio was about to never pay you back. Most economic analysts have shown that negative interest rates can actually be a negative for the economy. Additionally, the U.S. currently does not have a negative interest rates, and the overall effectiveness of the fiscal stimulus is not guaranteed. Bannon said that the movement created by Trump would be similar to previous periods in American history. It will be as exciting as the 1930s. Uh, greater than the Reagan Revolution, conservatives plus populists in an economic nationalist movement. Both eras cited by Bannon include large increases in the national debt, which Trump campaigned against. All right, so where's my notes? There's my notes. <clears throat> All right, now, is this bad? Is this good? And uh, whereas you would normally think the side, negative interest rates is the side, the things going wacky in general being bad, which is true, is there's not enough economic demand or growth on the private sector side to drive up interest rates, so money just keeps piling up as profits are thrown into savings. 
Um, there is some merit to what Bannon is talking about. And it depends on what government spending we're going to be using negative interest rates for. Because if we, it's no different. It's, it's exactly like this. This is some more, before we go on to the macroeconomic national debt and that kind of thing, let's just take an example everybody's familiar with because it's the exact same thing going on. So if you understand this, you understand what's going on at the at national level with trillions of dollars. Right now, I think you get car loans for like under a percent. I know one guy several years ago, he got a car loan for 1%. Well, inflation is two, all right? So that is an effective negative interest rate. Car companies are desperate. Please buy our cars, even though you don't need new ones and they're lasting longer than Please buy new cars. So they have financing packages. It's like, here, here you go. For 1%, which is below inflation, you can get a car loan. And you're almost, you know, and I understand that I personally would not spend the money uh, to, to do that. I've got other things to do with my money, even if I make a little bit of a percentage point with it, uh, playing an inflation game. Um, but you almost got to be an idiot not to take that because it's like, what? You're basically, I get free financing for this car. Now, you still have to pay the price of the car, which is why I wouldn't want to do it. But when it comes to the financing, you're actually making money in terms of purchasing power against inflation on the interest or the lack thereof. So the, that, that to me, oh yeah, you're basically paying me to borrow this money to buy this car. When it comes to the national debt or government financing, <clears throat> it's the same thing. And if we can finance government purchases with negative interest rates, yes, because that is gonna, it's not going to be interest expense. It'll be interest income for the taxpayer, which is really weird. Um, and it's a sign of it's a symptom of other bad things structurally wrong with the economy. But in this particular case, as it pertains to government finances, hell yes! If you can finance at negative interest rates, if if the rest of the world is stupid enough to lend the United States government money and not get paid back as much, like lose money on the deal, that's a good thing, at least for the U.S. government and the U.S. taxpayer. The real issue is, what are we going to spend that money on? And here's where you have to be very discerning between public uh, infrastructure projects, things that need financing, things that have to be repaired, our bridges, our roads, our highways, um, maybe upgrade some defense, things that will help keep the economy operating smoothly versus what he says, well, let's just throw things against the wall and see what sticks. Profligate pissing away your money which could inevitably lead towards inflation and all that. So we got to look at the two things this way. If it is <clears throat> for infrastructure that we have to maintain, build absolutely necessary vital things to the, the integrity and the infrastructure of the country, yes, that would make sense because we have to spend that money anyway. Uh, there will be a rate of return in maintaining our, our roads and our infrastructure and whatever else. Uh, so if we can finance that at negative interest rates, yes, please do. That's no different than buying a car you need and negative interest rates. But where I'm worried about is where Bannon is recommending to throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. That sounds like Keynesian uh, economics on steroids. So we're going to do this massive stimulus and we're going to just piss away a lot of money. Let's just put it on. It's negative interest. We can do what we want. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, one that does add to the debt, you just keep spending more, even if it, has, it, it incrementally gets less and less. So you, you borrow $40 trillion and because of 0.1% native, I don't know what the, the decimals are. Oh, well, we only now owe the next year $39.999 trillion. Well, we really didn't improve our situation. Um, and the second thing is we've already done that. We've already printed off money. We've already done this massive stimulus. I remember... I don't know if you guys know this guy called Barack Obama. He's still the president, by the way. You should look into that. And this guy before him, Bush, these guys pissed away so much fucking money. So much money on infrastructure, social. Barack Obama just gave money to people. The Obama phones. He fucking gave people cash in Detroit. Fucking Christ. And what did that do for the economy? Nothing. Because... You can't just give people money. You just can't flood an economy with money. That's just this money. That doesn't result in extra production. The people in the economy has to go and agree on uninterrupted, unintervened terms, an unintervened with the government environment. What the prices are, what the contracts are, what the value of labor and capital is, 
in order to say, okay, now let's, this, if this makes profit, this makes sense to start producing uh, or pursuing this particular venture. That's how real long-term jobs are formed and you actually have economic production. It's not the money, it's the stuff that you're after. So if you just leave the economy the fuck alone, uh, you know, and you maintain the roads or whatever else that the economy can operate, it will figure out its equilibrium point. We'll start producing shit again uh, that is profitable on a much more stable and uh, uh, what's the word? permanent, no, not, nothing's really permanent, but uh, on pricing and, and, uh, and costs that are, that are based, that are pretty fixed in the short term, that we'll, it, the economy will grow again. You'll have jobs. If all of a sudden you flood the economy with money, it's like, okay, now, remember cash for clunkers? Right, that warped the economy a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> or the, the auto market? Um, stop fucking with it. Stop throwing money in it. That's not going to result in long-term, stable, permanent economic growth. You get a shot and then it'll go away. And that, that's proven mathematically. If you look at economic growth, not just since Bush's time, but since the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, I'll say it again, economic growth has been grow going down. And Obama, I probably have to update the charts because he's coming like neck and neck between him and Bush as to who has the lowest growing economy or the slowest growing economy between the two. Um, printing off money, borrowing money, and pissing it away, quote, throwing it up against the wall, does not result in economic growth. I even had a, a client who I put together the chart and I showed you, I correlated the percent change in the monetary base and the percent change in economic growth. There is a negative 0.18 correlation. It, it actually hurts economic growth to print off more money. So fucking stop it. But I am not I am not on Trump's team. I'm not on the Council of Economic and I should be. Oh shit, would that be fun? Actually that sounds like a real job. No. No, and I think about it, no. Ooh. Be careful what you wish for. No, I don't want to live in DC. No. I could work from home. Maybe I could just advise the Council of Economic Advisors. Like, nah nah nah, I'll tell you guys what to think. I'm going to sit in South Dakota. You guys go and deal with the traffic and the leftists and the liberals. I'm going to go hunt fossils. So anyway, so that, that explains it. So yeah, if we have real legitimate uh, structured, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <clears throat> um, Non-frivolous costs, things that have to be spent, things that are commonsensical, things that are genuinely under the domain of public spending that has to be done. That should be financed with negative interest rates, but simply borrowing money because it's a negative interest rates and racking up a ton of debt so we can save 1%. I mean, that really is like, oh, oh, oh it is. Here's another thing we can all relate to. Honey, there's a 1% off sale at Kohl's. And she goes and she buys fucking everything. It's like, we don't need this shit, woman. But I got 1% off. That's exactly what's happening with this throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. Anyway, hope that helped out. Hope we all learned a little bit about uh, Bannon's uh, negative interest rate uh, policy and the old captain explained it to you. If you got a question, go to assholeconsulting.com. I will answer all your questions as brilliantly as I did here before. Uh, get my books. You can find them at amazon.com. Go to my podcast, The Clary Podcast. Go to my blog, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. Tools.